الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم Dear respected brothers and sisters, dear friends of Allah, dear smiling faces and souls, I greet you with the best greeting. May peace, Allah's mercy, and Allah's blessing be upon each and every one of you. We express gratitude to Allah. We praise and thank Allah. We ask for His assistance. We seek His forgiveness and pardon, and we believe in Him, and Him alone do we rely upon. We ask Allah to save us from the evils of ourselves and from the evils of our actions. Whom Allah guides, none can lead astray, and he whom he makes astray, no one can lead him back to the straight path. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and we bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Allah, the most glorious and most high, tells us in the Quran, O you who believe, be mindful of Allah and always speak the truth. He will direct you to do good deeds and He will forgive you your sins. And whosoever, and whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, He has indeed achieved a great achievement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another verse, Be mindful of Allah and He will teach you. He has full knowledge of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us that God and His angels send blessings upon the Prophet. May peace and blessings be upon him. So, O you who believe, send blessings upon him and give him the greetings of peace. In the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that I recited earlier, the Prophet wasallam tells us, seeking of knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this moment. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this soul that is designed to become close to Him. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this mind that can think, ponder, and reflect. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of His blessings and favors upon us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ If you are grateful, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I will increase you. So today, inshallah, we will speak about knowledge. Knowledge that is sacred. When we look at our history, we find that intellect and enlightenment have been hallmarks of the Muslims for centuries. Our entire civilization is based on knowledge. May Allah allow us to uphold this tradition and pass it on to the next generation. What is the source of knowledge? Allah is the, is the source of all knowledge and Allah guides to his light whom he wills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And at the conclusion of the, this ayah, he tells us, that Allah guides with his light whom he wills. Now when we think about knowledge and Muslims, if we were to look in the media and we try to analyze what is being said, you will be, you will be told that Muslims are against education. 
or education for females. But how can that be possible when the first command that came to our beloved Prophet وسلم, the first revelation to our Prophet was read, iqra, the command that does not specify or exclude any gender. In this ayah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, read in the name of your Lord who created. He created man from a clinging form. Read your Lord is the most bountiful one who taught humankind by means of the pen and who taught humankind what he did not know. When we look at the state of our ummah or the whole world, we see that literacy rates are going up. We also see that the destruction of the planet is grow going up. Crime, sin and selfishness knows no bound. So through information and knowledge, we should be progressing as a human race. So then why are we regressing? What we learn is that knowledge alone does not equate to good. When material knowledge touches the ego, it creates destruction. But when sacred knowledge touches the soul, it causes enlightenment. So the question on everyone's mind is, what is sacred knowledge? Sacred knowledge, is it knowing, is it doing, or is it being? Think about that for a second. Is it knowing what you are supposed to know? Is it doing what you are supposed to do? Or is it being as you are meant to be by the command of Allah? And the answer is all of the above. I share with you a comprehensive hadith. The significance of this hadith is that the entire religion has been summarized in three spheres. It is narrated in the, in the book Muslim by Umar radiallahu an. He says, one day while we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah, a man came over to us whose clothes were exceedingly white and whose hair was exceedingly black. No signs of travel were seen on him, but none of us knew him. He came and sat down opposite the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and rested his knees against his beloved knees and placed the palms of his hands on his thighs. So let's pause and analyze this blessed and unique moment in our history. Who is being remembered? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is the teacher? Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And who are the students? The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The setting is seventh century Arabia. You're either a local and known or you are a traveler and you look like a traveler, someone that's traveled through maybe a sandstorm. Why is this person's clothing ex ex extremely white? And why is his hair clean and black? Something unusual. So Umar radiallahu anhu continues that the man that came and sat in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so close, this is foreign for somebody that you've never seen and may never have met. But that is not the case as we will see in, um, as the hadith goes on. Umar radiallahu anhu says, the man asked, O Muhammad, inform me about Islam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Islam is to testify that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. And it is to establish prayer and it is to give zakah and it is to fast Ramadan and it is to make the pilgrimage to the house of God if you are able to do so. The person asking said, you have spoken the truth. And we wondered at him asking and confirming it. This is the thought of the Sahaba or Umar radiallahu anhu, that you're asking a question and then you're also saying you are correct. The person then asked, inform me about Iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is to believe in Allah, it is to believe in his angels, it is to believe in his books, it is to believe in his messengers, and it is to believe in the last day, and it is to believe in predestination. The good and the evil of it all come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person asking said, you've spoken the truth. The man then asks, inform me about Ihsan. And he said, it is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you see him. And if you do not see him, Indeed, know that he sees you. Umar radiallahu anhu narrates that 
The man then asked, inform me about the hour. He said, the one question about it knows no more than the questioner. The Prophet ﷺ said, I do not know any more than you do. He said, then inform me about its signs about the last day. The Prophet ﷺ says, the slave woman will give birth to her mistress and you will see barefooted, naked, destitute shepherds competing in the loftiness of constructions. Ya Allah, the signs are all around us. May we learn sacred knowledge before it's too late. So Umar radiallahu anhu says, the man then departed and I stayed for some time with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He, may peace and blessings be upon him, asked, O oh Umar, do you know who the questioner was? I said, Allah and his messenger are more knowing. He said, it was Jibreel, the angel Gabriel. He came to teach you your religion. So, one of the elements, what a beautiful hadith. A hadith that's worth pondering upon, reading over and over, sharing with our loved ones. The first element that was asked and confirmed was Iman. Now we remember the question, what is sacred knowledge? Is it doing, is it knowing, or is it being? So Iman relates to the element of knowing, knowing what we believe in. What is my creed? What is our creed? What do we believe in? We believe in Allah. We believe in his, in his angels. We believe in his books. We believe in his messengers. We believe in the last day. And we believe in predestination, both the good and the evil of it. And within each, there are categories. For example, when we say believing in Allah, this entails understanding Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding and learning the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His attributes, His uniqueness, and inshallah, eventually His essence. The second element that was um, confirmed was that Islam relates to action, laws, and jurisprudence. So Islam is to testify that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. And Islam is to establish prayer. It is to give zakah, it is to fast in Ramadan, and it is to make the pilgrimage to the house of Allah if you are able to do so. We must know our laws. It is an obligation upon us. As I had recited uh, earlier, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم Seeking knowledge is compulsory upon each believer. And so what is it that I need to do to know Allah and His Messenger? What is it that I need to learn in order to perform the rites of prayer? What is it that I need to know in order to fast correctly? What is it that I need to prohibit my body from while I am fasting? And also the fasting of the heart that nothing should enter the heart except the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these elements of faith that are relevant to us if we are a parent, how to bring up good children. If we are children, how to treat our parents. If we're an employee or an employer, the rights. If we're people in business, the laws of trade and commerce. If we are a neighbor, what are their rights? When the Prophet ﷺ said, the seeking of knowledge is an absolute must and an obligation upon each and every believer. It relates to every element of your life where you need to know what the command and the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in those matters. So we ask, what is the reward of fulfilling these obligations? You know, it's cold, we wake up for fajr, we make our wudu. Right? What is the reward? What do I get? What do I get from abstaining from food? What do I get from parting from my wealth, something for the poor, by purifying my wealth? What do I get? In this hadith of Qudsi, we learn that the reward is the friendship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever shows enmity to a friend of mine, to a wali, I shall be at war with him. My servant does not draw near to me with anything more love to me with more than the religious duties I enjoin upon him. So the path to closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by fulfilling the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do. And my servant continues to draw near to me with optional works so that I shall love him. What is made clear here is the way to the wilaya of Allah 
the way to the friendship, love, sanctity, and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through fulfilling our obligations. The last point is Ihsan that was confirmed in this beautiful hadith. And Ihsan relates to being in a state of excellence, being great in character and conduct. And so the first was about knowing what to believe in. The second element we discussed are the deeds which, which give us concrete ex expression in our beliefs. And the third is transforming our interior and exterior so that it, it is becoming and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next, I'd like to ask a question. What is the position of the seeker or the teacher of sacred knowledge in the sight of Allah? The Prophet وسلم, in his hadith tells us, whoever travels a path in order to seek knowledge, Allah will facilitate for him because of it a path to paradise. God loves and honors the learner and the seeker. So the question is, is sacred knowledge the end or the means? Is it our destiny or is it the path? So when sacred knowledge is acquired as a means and, um, and the end goal, it is when sacred knowledge is acquired as a means, it leads you to Allah. And when it is the ends, it leads you to your ego. Imam Ghazali in his book, The Beginning of Guidance, Bidayatul Hidayah, he mentions in the introduction regarding sacred knowledge, to proceed, you who desire to acquire sacred knowledge, expressing in yourself a sincere longing and passionate thirst for it, know that if your aim in seeking knowledge is to compete, to show off, to outdo your peers, to garner attention, and to amass the debris of this world, then you are on your way to rendering your religion null and void, destroying yourself and selling your eternal life for this present temporary one. But he goes on to say, but if in seeking knowledge your intention and your aim is between Allah Most High and yourself to gain guidance and not simply the transmission of information, then glad tidings be to you. The angels will spread their wings for you as you walk and the fish in the sea will seek forgiveness for you as you strive. So to summarize, we've discussed sacred knowledge We've, we've discussed the source of it, and we've discussed the reward of it. What do we do next, practically, 21st century British Muslims? What do we do? Right? How do we learn sacred knowledge? And is it a necessity? It is a necessity for us to live a life in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that requires sacred knowledge. First, we must correct our intention, intention learning, is from the cradle to the grave and it must be exclusively for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must be mindful of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be mindful, be conscious, be aware, be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will teach you. And we must learn based on our current state. So if we have knowledge of prayer, but we do not have knowledge of purification, then that becomes priority. If we have knowledge of purification, but we do not have knowledge of trade, and we are involved in buying and selling in contracts, that becomes priority. Then, the next step we must take is to seek out conscious, pious scholars that have learned the traditional faith from teachers who have learned from teachers with an unbroken chain leading back to the companions in our Prophet We must pass on the sacred knowledge to the next generation. 15 minutes of learning every day with our family, with our siblings, with our children or with our parents can equal to over 90 hours of sacred knowledge seeking within a year. So how do we raise productive, positive British Muslims? First and foremost, we must support the places of sacred knowledge in our communities. We must pray that our mosques are able to continue to provide the spaces, the knowledge, and the teachers required to pass on this uh, sacred knowledge from generation to generation. We must have a multi-generational concern. We must ask ourselves, what will Islam look like 
in Britain 2121. A century from now, what will be the perception of Islam? What will be the state of Islam? And what will be the state of Muslims? And what can we do today in order to rectify the perception? What can we do today that our, our progeny and their generations are able to continue to say, La ilaha illallah. I conclude with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Talabul Ilmi Faridatun Ala Kulli Muslim, seeking of knowledge is compulsory upon each and every believer. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa isa'il al-Muslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-Rahim. Anything that is said is that it was correct is from Allah and His Messenger. Any errors in understanding or statement is from my lower self. So I seek forgiveness from Allah for myself, for each and every one of you. May He guide us through His light towards sacred knowledge. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihillahu falamudhillalah wa man yudlil falahadiyalah wa nashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashadu anna sayyidana wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh qala allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem inna allaha wa malaikatahu yisalluna ala al-nabi يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات قال الله تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وهمزة وسد الله وأسد رسوله رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابه لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اغفر أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اهد أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وعملا صالحا وشفاء من كل داء اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع وعين لا تدمع ودعاء لا يستجاب له اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك وحبيبك حبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقيم الصلاة